Evan Lucas, IG, perfect timing, joining us from Melbourne. Good morning to you, Evan. Um, we're looking for a rise upon the open. Uh, will this afterglow from the China data of yesterday continue early, and then are we expecting you know big change in the afternoon, considering you know a whole other raft coming? Yeah, it certainly looks like that will be the case, Nadine. Having a look probably at BHP's ADR is the best way to sort of get a, a fairly good overview of that. It looks like jumping up to highs that we haven't seen since basically back in March. Looking at opening up around about $36.22 on the ADR, and that will mean it's punching through resistance levels of that $35.77. So it does look after yesterday's stellar results coming out of China, and you've got to take probably what came with it with a little bit of a pinch of salt, but it was a very good number for us on the import side, that 10.1% jump. Probably will get moderated down next month, but it was a really good number. The iron ore was a record at, at uh, 73.15 uh, million tons and uh, extracted 8.66 billion US dollars to buy that in. Is always going to sort of roller coaster onto a, a resource uh, rich company, country like Australia. If you have a look at the dollar and also the, the, the South African RAND and also at the Brazilian Real, they were the ones that were stand out last night in the currencies, and that all comes on the back of that resource rich idea, the fact that commodities are also well and truly on, uh, on, on an upward trend and that all sort of culminated from that figure. It'll get probably moderated come 11.30 when we do see the CPI data and then the plethora of things like fixed asset investment, industrial production and also the PPI. I think looking at the CPI data, the expectations for 2.8 percent, it's a slight tick up from last month but it is well and truly below the sort of official expectations of 3.5 percent and now that we're actually seeing some relatively good stabilization data coming out, it may actually see uh, and bolster uh, Premier Li Keqiang's sort of idea that China will grow by 7.5 percent for this year. So it's just another chance to sort of see if China is stabilizing after some fairly sort of shaky couple of months as they ring out speculative lending, as they cut down on fraudulent invoices. One thing I'll be quite interested in to look at is fixed asset investment. It is one part of the Chinese economy that is realistically overheating. It's one thing that the central government has been really cracking down on. Shanghai and Beijing themselves have seen growth of between 8 to 10 percent, and that is well and truly above where they want it. So we want to see fixed asset investment coming back slightly and probably stabilizing. And industrial production is something that was, has been weak. And considering the export data yesterday, you'd probably expect it to tick up to maybe around about 9 percent is the expectation you may actually see it coming out on the upside maybe even 10 or 11 percent considering those figures so today expect the materials place to have a really good day it's something that we will continue to watch and as that China plethora data comes out it may moderate it but it does look like we continue to have a fairly good finish to the week after what was a fairly bad start to the to the month in terms of where we were at yeah that uh, near two percent drop on Wednesday really took a lot of market players by surprise what does that tell us about how the market is digesting this information and on that then uh, was yesterday's response to this China data justified? Yeah, pro look, having a look at Wednesday, and I think you've got to put Wednesday in perspective. Everybody was talking about, you know, 27 billion sold off and all this kind of material. It was just a small correction, mm -hmm. and in terms of that, the trade value going through was quite low, so that made price action a little bit more volatile. At the same time, that night on in, on Tuesday night, we saw the, the worst print we've seen on the S&P since basically mid-June. On saying that, it was the lowest volume turnover that the U.S. has had year to date. It was only around mm -hmm. about 4.35 billion dollars, and that's very, very low for for a market like the U.S. So they are on holidays. We do understand that they're coming to the end of their their current earning cycles, and and all that sort of culminated in a little bit of fear, sort of selling on, on Wednesday. And yesterday's pickup was probably a lot of people picking up some bargains. We had seen probably the bank and also Rio and BHP being shed when they're on the way up and momentum suggests that so yeah you'd probably expect that to sort of pick up we may end up the uh, end up sort of seeing the, the week on a neutral basis and and as we move into the Australian earnings season after what we saw from Rio last night the result was a slight beat on most of the expectations but the fact they managed to to see cost cutting on the way up and actually extracting record iron ore production and therefore offsetting the current losses they have it, it was a better than expected result and that'll probably flow through to our, our sort of trading session today Interesting. We spoke with uh, Rio Tinto CEO Sam Walsh yesterday evening. He characterized the result as good. Didn't mention great in there. Um, I'm just reading some uh, analysis coming through on Reuters saying that in the business of buying and selling mining assets, Rio Tinto really does seem to be dancing with two left feet. We've had news coming out from Rio uh, surrounding its aluminium business. Now we're getting some information coming on its uh, investments in Mongolia. Um, how do you rate the company? overall was yesterday's result anything really to get you excited about uh, 
its prospects going forward for growth? Probably the way to respond to the, to the thing, I'd probably agree with, with Sam Walsh. I'd say it was good, maybe even sort of slightly too, it was okay. Uh, and, and what I mean by that, the, the concern that most analysts now have with Rio Tinto is that it is moving further and further towards a pure play idea. It is now having 91 to almost 93% of its earnings coming from iron ore and iron ore only. A lot of its acquisitions over the last five years have been <coughs> poor. There's no doubt that the coal and allied overtake, the, the, the Riversdale and also having a look at Alcane has just been a disaster for the company and the fact that they're now writing down assets, shedding them out or even trying to sort of spin them off into their own separate entity is starting to really hurt how Rio looks on its diversified portfolio basis. In saying that, Sam Walsh has made it very clear that they are getting back to cost reduction, streamlining as hard as they can and concentrating on their core idea and their core idea has always been that iron ore. I think what analysts want to see is how they're going to continue to compete with the BHPs of this world or are they going to go back to the original idea of being an iron ore producer and on current tracking you suggest that the latter is what they're looking at doing. You've also got to remember that, that currently Sam Walsh is very, very fresh in the job. He's only seven months in. He took <coughs> over in January, February and he's still got a long way to go. But uh, yeah, I, I would give it a good to an okay sort of result yesterday. You can understand why it jumped up. They have been very much oversold over the last three months. but. There needs to be more of an understanding about where Rio's direction is, not just in the next sort of 18 months, but in the 10 years to, to go. And that's what they normally do, sort of look at doing. And, and currently that looks a little bit blurred. Um, it's interesting because Sam Walsh also said, look, we're looking to divest these assets, but it's not, you know, sale day at the market bazaar or something along those lines. How do you think the company is going with its divestment strategy, considering some of the massive hiccups they've had in the past with, with M&A, which Sam Walsh has been clear that he's, uh, the company is going to be staying away from? Yeah, and, and there's no surprise they're going to stay away from M&A. That it has been a disaster, as I alluded to before. Tom Albanese certainly did not have a very good record at picking that up. I think if you have a look at what's going on with their divestment, they're doing, again, it's just okay. They've got rid of some of their coal assets, but coal's not hard to get rid of, considering that it is a very much an underperforming area, not just for, for Rio, but across the, the general board. I think if you come back to what happened with their diamond business, it's a fair clear idea at the moment. There's not many buyers out in the market for even relatively good business. Their diamond, their diamond business is very small and that's why they want to get rid of it. It's not a core asset, but it, they can't actually sell it. There isn't actually anybody out there to take it over. And that sort of suggests that they are in a fairly sticky period. It is a fairly challenging environment and that's something that not just Rio, but the whole sort of market mm -hmm. is saying. So. They've still got a long way to go. They're, they're, they're hopefully, and as he has alluded to, they're not going to sell unless they actually get a good price for it. We'll hold on to it if we need to. And, and that is a good thing to know, but it just means that that cost-cutting structure and that cost-cutting plan may not happen as fast as the market hopes, and that could also be a bit of a negative trend on, on the share price itself. So, Evan, we are watching materials. We're watching gold. Uh, what else are you watching? Tab Corp has its results today, but there's no sort of big economic data coming up, even on, on the U.S. agenda today, is there? That's correct. The only thing that's probably going to be more locally sort of focused, the RBA monetary policy statement mm -hmm. is out today. Now, considering what we saw on Tuesday, it was a cut. We then got a fairly neutral statement with re regards to where the RBA sees. We would therefore not expect any rate cuts coming before the federal election or even into October. I think what may happen today, something that they have always harped on about is inflation. And there is an expectation they may actually downgrade their outlook for, for inflation today. They think we'll probably see their 2.5 for the end of this year to come down to 2.25 next year could actually come down to two and a half to, to three percent from sort of that two and a half to three and a half percent as well so there may be a slight change in the inflation outlook from the RBA it will therefore put a little bit of a flaw with regards to the Aussie dollar and also the possibility of cutting rates because inflation is something that, that Glenn Stevens has made very clear mm -hmm. he watches very very closely we still have relatively low un uh, unemployment it's at 5.7 percent despite the fact that the uh, participation rate is falling to a, to a record low since 2006 so it, it's going to be an interesting statement it, it, considering the Aussie dollar popped up quite hard last night it may put a bit of a roof on that on that call considering that the market and the local market is still quite quite poor and the general underlying economy in the non-mining sector is still remaining very very stagnant so that's the only other thing to sort of look out for today we'll probably have a bit of a, a positive day particularly in those materials play Evan Lucas we'll leave it there thanks so much for joining us thanks to Dean Evan Lucas from IG